What's up my epic JTards? A while ago, I made a video on a fun little challenge in a fun little game called JTO. In said game, I couldn't take damage from kill bricks. That video got an underwhelming amount of views. So I'll make a part two just for fun. This is a part two of my how far can you progress in JTO without taking damage video. So if you haven't watched that, you should because there's some pretty important stuff in there. In this installment of the JTO no damage challenge, I'll be taking a look at ranks two through four. One thing before we start though, there are multiple useful glitches we can perform with the helicopter powers emote thing, so I will be buying that. I did state that any glitch was allowed, and I will mostly be using this for glitches, so this still counts, right? So with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's jump in to Ring 1. Wait, what? Everybody makes mistakes, but mine cost me a couple of hundred commenters bullying me. So there were a couple of towers from part 1 that I missed and marked as impossible, so I will do them now. Alrighty then, starting with Ring 1. The first tower that I missed from part 1 was Tower of Screen Punching, so let's explain how you beat this nightmare of a tower. Spoiler alert, this tower took me the longest amount of time out of any of the towers so far, so strap in. Floors 1 through 5 don't have any kill bricks, it's only at floor 6 where the steam begins to pick up. Floor 6 has the semi maze section, where you need to take the alternate path in order to avoid taking damage. There's also this wraparound that I never failed at, cause, I mean, just look at how pathetic this wraparound is. Floor 7. Floor freaking 7! After floor 7, things get seriously hard. This conveyor section requires your full attention. You want to get close to the kill brick wall, and then just before being sent to the right side or vice versa, you have to hold down W. It's hard to explain, but you'll get the hang of it after a while. The next kill brick section requires you to wobble this platform to the right side and perform a long jump. Nothing too crazy until we get to this, uh, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to call this. I normally rush through this section until the second last jump where I like to take my time. This section gave me the most trouble for some reason since I never found a consistent strategy for it. Floor 8. You see, a lag high jump got patched a while ago by Bergchins, which screw you by the way. I'm kidding obviously, I love the JTO staff team, much homo. So to get past this section now, you gotta do a galaxy brain tier strat. To do this section, you have to do a sideways heli lag high jump. You might be thinking, a sideways what now? Well, at first I had no idea either, and it reminded me of the time my friend said he failed a 3 stud invisible elevator no jump Thanos stick out on cows. But thankfully, a Chato contributor born in 1989 by the name of Storm T, Storm T1989, came to the rescue. After a lot of hard work and hours of rage, I found a consistent method of doing this monstrosity of a lag high jump. To perform a sideways heli lag high jump, you have to turn your character sideways to the wall, turn your character 90 degrees so it would look like this, and then start holding down the jump button. Then you want to start holding down W and freeze your Roblox client, which you can do in the Windows and apparently Apple version of Roblox. Then with some luck and strategy, you can jump over 12 studs in the air and get past this stupid part. To think all of this was for some stupid video. But this is just the first of many KB sections on floor A. It's better to do this jump as a wraparound. The source is, trust me bro. Then I do this skip because there's no way in hell I'll take the ladder round. Face sideways at this conveyor or you will be murdered by me. This part here made me fail and rage multiple times, but I was doing the jump wrong the whole time. You want to do it from the outside rather than jumping over it as shown in the footage. And now for the infamous part. I'll let, I'll let the YouTube comments explain this one. Okay, for your information, please check the pinned comment before commenting if a tower is possible. You're not really helping me if you're the 719th person to tell me! Anyways, there you go guys, I did it! Are you proud of me now? Floor 9 is a floor I'm glad I flew, because there's this jump at the very end that is probably inconsistent. And after all of that madness, you can finally walk to the wind pad of Tower of Screen Punching. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! This tower took me way too long, over 145 attempts to be specific, and without Storm Team 1989, I would probably give up on this tower. This is easily the hardest tower on the challenge so far. Uh, I'm not saying it this time. Just do a corner clip here, yep, it was that simple. Except no it wasn't, because you always get teleported into a kill brick if you try to corner clip here. So instead, you have to flat clip here. This will take you to the challenge's wind pad, but don't touch it, because you will be kicked. 
you have to backtrack to the beginning of this floor and do it legit, and without taking damage, and without failing because there's a kill brick floor. The challenge completion actually gives you the badge for SOMD, so that's why this method works, I guess. The ta this tower point is pretty useless for now, but the keywords are for now. Simple dimple for steeple people. This joke was a bit confusing, so let me explain it to the JTO community. The steeple of fading memories is about forgetting thing. Hmm, I wonder why I forgot the steeple. It doesn't matter anyway, since there are damaging platforms on the first floor that we can't skip. Oh well, it doesn't give a tower point anyway. I explained how to do tower versatility in the last video, although there are some new things I want to mention. Firstly, there's a skip at the fourth conveyor section that lets you progress to the next floor. I utilize this skip, and no, I'm not a scaredy cat, I'm a JTO speedrunner. Secondly, this section on floor 7 was a lot harder than I initially thought. You have to move very carefully to not get damaged or sunken into the floor for some reason. So yeah, that's not Pog. That's about it, really. I will most likely repeat this tower in part 3 because the way I did this RNG jump might be a bit illegitimate, but screw you, this jump sucks anyway. And the last tower I'm going to talk about, Tower of Dangerous Expeditions. So, you know how I said everything was possible in this tower apart from this one section? Well, it turns out this one section is possible, and I now have to beat an intense tower. Hooray! Without further delay, let me guide you to the completion of a Tower of Dangerous Expedition Damageless Run. There aren't any killbricks on floor 1, and there's only one boring killbrick spinner on floor 2 that we can easily get past. Things start to get interesting on floor 3. The beginning of this floor has these two killbrick spinners spinning over some jumps. This section looks hard, but trust me, this is really easy. Do a jump every time the killbrick spinners get close to you, it's that easy. But the next section is not easy. You have a giant killbrick spinner spinning clockwise inside of this circular obstacle course. Here's how I got past this part. I firstly jumped on this platform and waited for the killbrick spinner to pass the next jump, and jumped to the platform below me that the spinner just passed, essentially wrapping around the spinner. Then I repeated this process with the next jump. Once you make the second spinner jump, you have to quickly climb on this truss and jump at the very last second to the lower portion of the part you just climbed on. After these three time jumps, you're safe as long as you don't mess up. But floor 3 isn't quite done with you, because you have some spinning platforms over a spinning killbrick. Sometimes you can get unlucky and have the KB spinner in a bad position, but it's doable in every position. Floor 4 starts off with a conveyor section that requires luck to pass. I still haven't found a consistent strategy to pass this part, so just hope the conveyor gives you a random momentum boost. Then afterward, it gets pretty easy. Just jump over the kill bricks at the next conveyor, and there are no more damaging parts until Floor 7. Floor 7 has the infamous impossible section, so how do we complete it? Well, there's an alternate route that you can jump to, which I never noticed. I missed it probably because this was the last tower I needed to test and I was in a big time crunch. The rest of the floor is just don't touch kill brick and it's pretty straightforward. Although, be careful when you're next to this wall, and I lost one of my runs by going too close. Floor 8 is... oh gosh. You have to speed run through some dangerous parts or else you'll get pushed off. I mean, the only jump with a strategy on this floor is this one where you have to equip T-Pose before you flick off the truss and land. Floor 9 has this one conveyor section with damaging parts that pushes you to the left. It's actually not that bad, just be careful and don't rush it. Floor 10 has one final kill rig jump at the very end. I personally did it like a wraparound, I'm not sure if we can do like a regular jump. Uh, if you get past that, you have beaten the Tower of Dangerous Expeditions damage list. Well, this tower sure was a dangerous journey, but it was decently fun. The only thing that ruined the experience for me was the one RNG jump on floor 4, but other than that, it was fairly enjoyable. Now it's time to get into the actual towers of this video. Kind of crazy to think that we're like 5 to 7 minutes in, and we still haven't gotten to the actual towers. Let's take a look at Ring 2 now. Welcome to Ring 2, the ring where at least one tower is someone's least favorite. In the time between the first part, two new towers were added to Ring 2, so let's see if the new and old towers are possible. You know the drill, we start from the easiest tower and progress to the hardest. Tower of Phone Snapping One of the November monthly challenges is complete TOPS without taking damage. The JTO devs are literally doing my job for me! I don't really have much to say, everything is pretty straightforward in terms of jumps, and everyone knows how to beat this tower damage list because it was a monthly challenge. The part I failed at the most was this KB netted section on floor 2. Man, I'm really bad at these KB netted sections. First it was TOSP, then TOV, and then TOPS. Tower of Big Hole. This tower has a few killbrick sections, so let's talk about them. 
Part 3 has this kill brick ladder that we can avoid. Just flat clip here and you should flat clip past the ladder in a few attempts. I don't really get why there are kill bricks on this ladder anyway, it doesn't make the tower any more fun or challenging. Floor 5 has this slightly worrying GBJ, but all you have to do is just not fall. There's also this section with the kill bricks on loose platforms, but again, nothing too hard. Floor 6 has another one of these netted KB sections that I'm terrible at. Yes, I did fail here once, don't at me. At the end of floor 6, there's also a conveyor that pushes you into a kill brick. You have to time the jump and not jump too early or too late. This was the part I failed on the most. Floor 8 has some stressful raps at the beginning, but I faced harder challenges. This is effortless for me by now. And after that, we have no more kill bricks in this tower. Oh wait, I thought this was... No, oh, okay then. Yeah, so the very end of the tower has this really tight squeeze section, but it's doable. I'm thankful that I beat it first try. I can't even imagine how annoyed I would be if I had failed here. Tower of Overcoming Hatred is a tower that people apparently really don't like. The tower name is completely wrong then. We gotta report Jato for misleading content then. Aww. Floor 9 is mostly made out of kill breaks, and that sucks because everything else is fully possible. The only realistic way I can think of getting past this part is by flinging yourself at these pushing platforms, but I'm too dumb to utilize flinging glitches, so moving on. Tower of Cold Hands. I have never played this tower with cold hands in my life. Am I illegally a criminal now? Or is this tower lying to me? Floor 5 has this section where you have to climb a ladder in between kill bricks. Try it yourself, you'll take damage, I guarantee you. Moving on to Donex Tower. Alright, let's enter the tower portal and speedrun taking damage. Wow, that's gotta be a world record, right? Which category does the speedrun apply to? Our next tower is the Tower of Traps from BTS. No, goddammit, not that BTS. Floor 4 is the first section with kill bricks, and all hope seems lost until you realize that you can just wall hop and, and skip all the kill bricks. That was a close one. But as my favorite musician, Neil Cesariga, said, in the end, it doesn't even matter. At the end of Floor A, there's this stupid kill brick wraparound section that should have been removed in the revamp, by the way. Oh well, that was close. There is an invisible platform underneath the wraps though, so maybe if it can do a really long wrap with heli powers or something, maybe you can pass it? I don't know, honestly. This tower is literally a healing simulator, what do you expect? Well, you can make it to floor 3 where you have to run through kill picks to reach a mandatory button. Oh well, wasn't in the mood to beat a 50 minute tower anyway. Up next, Tower of Shattered Dreams. I'll just get straight to the point. Floor 6 has KB platforms we have to jump on in order to progress. Oh no, insert a funny joke here. Next! Tower of Table Flipping is an interesting tower to say the least. On Floor 1, there are multiple kill break parts, but as long as you're careful and know what to do, it's pretty simple. The same logic applies to Floor 2, although this part is with the pushing platform you have to use T-Pose, so I'm fairly certain it's impossible without it. Floor 3 has this interesting kill brick spinner, but just wait for it to get in a good position and keep going along the spinner. Don't stop or jump, you'll be fine. Look guys, even Adamir could do it, and he loves taking damage whenever he can. Floor 5 has some simple kill brick wraps that can be easily done with and without T-Pose. Just make sure you turn around like this instead of actually turning. On Floor 7, there's this interesting obstacle. You want to jump to the side and hover mid-air for a bit until your head is under the kill brick platform and then land on the bottom. Floor A has a kill brick spinner in this maze, and this is probably the hardest, if not one of the hardest parts in the tower. If you get the rhythm of the spinner right, you should be okay, but pay full attention to this floor, otherwise you'll take lead damage. By the way, the corners are safe spots, use them to calm down or to use the bathroom. Floor 9 is a break, there are no kill bricks here, and there is this nice balcony to go to... View Ring 2? Well, it's not the best, but they tried. Floor 10 puts you straight back into action, however. The the transition from floor 9 to floor 10 is the cause of a good chunk of my fails on this tower. After the spinner passes, you jump and climb the ladder without pressing space. Then you have this fun KB spinner section. Just use the same strategy I used for TODE, wait for the spinner to pass, and then while jumping over it, do a jump. Then next up is the cylinder section, but don't worry, you can skip it with a wall hop. But you can skip the next section. At the very end of this tower, there is a squeeze section that's difficult if you don't know what you're doing. What the hell? However, I have a brain, so this section was as simple as a dimple. And then, the only thing standing between you and victory is a 0.5 stud platform. And there you go, I beat it. That wasn't so bad, was it? Well, that's another intense tower point that I will take with a full health bar. Next up, Toes. This tower is nicknamed Tower of True Skill, Killbrick Edition, by Candyman, the most reliable source. What do you expect? 
On floor one, there's a KP block we can't skip, and there go my toes. Oh hey, I beat this Citadel on stream recently. That's pretty cool. At floor three, there's a section where you have to take damage. Oh well, wasn't in the mood to rebeat cows, but with even dumber fails and restarts anyway. Tower of difficulty chart is possible up until floor five, where you have to jump on these parts to progress. Whew, thank gosh. And well, that's all the towers. Let's talk about the mini tower real quick. Just like his older brother Neat, maybe a tower is possible without taking damage since the mini this mini tower has no kill bricks. What an exciting way to end off Ring 2. To conclude Ring 2, 3 of the 12 or 4 out of the 13 towers are possible without taking damage. This is a comically low amount and I hope that the next ring will have more towers completable without losing health. We already have more than enough towers to access Ring 3, so without further delay, let's go to Ring 3. Welcome to Ring 3, everybody's favorite ring! Ring 3 is a break ring, the towers here are much easier compared to Ring 2, so this ring should feed us some tower points and should be a breeze, right? Because of Ring 3, this video will become outdated after a few weeks, or months, or years, you never know with the JTO devs really. Why? Because Citadel of Heights and Depths is still not out. Let's just hope it comes out before Part 3. So let's take a look at the towers. Tower of... I forgot, what's the name of it again? Oh yeah, Tower of Funny Thoughts. Yeah, not the most memorable tower. Anyways, this main section is impossible, but don't worry, we can just skip it with a simple wah hop skip. Then just complete some boring gameplay, touch the windpad, and... You get... Kicked? So you can skip an entire tower crossing section and floor of Thanos Tower. A soul crushing tower, mind you. But you can't skip one section of an easy tower? Sounds about right. Alright, then if you want to be like that, I'll be like that. It's time to bring out the big guns. I did say that all glitches were allowed, so it's time to use lag clipping. Lag clipping is a technique that lets you clip through one set of walls. To perform it, you have to have a really low frame count, 10 FPS works best for me, then jump and equip helicopter powers to clip into the wall. Then once your character hits the bottom, hit the spacebar and voila, you just did a lag clip. I had to do it to him, man. And this time, we actually beat the tower. Still can't believe I got kicked for skipping an easy tower. Up next, Tower of Inverted Colors. This tower has no kill bricks, so that's a free tower point for me. Can't complain. Tower of Ancient Trickery is the next tower in order. On floor 3, there's a section where you have to walk through kill bricks to progress to the next section. I was really looking forward to beating this tower. Oh well. <sighs> tower of Deep Sighing. Does anyone remember anything about this tower? Well, I remember that it has a KB walk at floor 1, that's about it however. Up next, Tower of Fatness. This tower is slimmer than pretty much any wacky frame tower. It's only called Tower of Fatness because it kind of looks like a borger. This is the only tower that I completed on stream, and I'm sure that it will stay that way. First off, an exploit was following me and lagging my server really hard when I was trying to complete this tower. Then there was a guy who's spamming coil thinking he's the most hilarious person known to man, and then there's people like this in the Roblox chat that feel the need to advertise themselves. Lastly, there's the hero that told me to ledge grab on TOSP. This is a just overall disaster of a stream, and I'm probably never gonna stream no damage ever again. Otherwise, the JTARDs will literally murder my stream. The only noteworthy section is on floor 10. Do these jumps as wraps, or else you'll fail. Probably. Well, that was a bit of a disaster, but I did it, guys, so it's all good. Next up is Tower. This tower's name is misleading, because you can't beat this tower damageless, so is it really winning, everyone? Jupiter underscore 5 wasn't in the right state of mind when naming this tower, it's okay. This tower sucks. Anyways, it's... possible? Oh crap, well let's start analyzing. Floor 2 has some simple jumps, nothing too difficult. But don't let this fool you, this is probably the hardest tower in, the, in this entire challenge. Floor 3 is where the funnies begin. To start, there's the KB maze that's harder than Tower of Anger. Then we have these conveyors that push you into damaging platforms. This section can be completed by going to the edge of the falling platform, jumping on the conveyor, and hoping for the best, really. Now be prepared for a timing trial. You have to somehow perfectly time and position yourself on these falling platforms in order to make the jump that skips this damage break. I can't really give any advice, this section is really inconsistent. Floor 4 starts off with some KB spinners. I'd recommend wrapping around them since it's easier to time. Then there's this jump that is possible without T-pose, but you need a lot of precision and you need to be and you need to position yourself really well. This part here after the invisible section is a kill break, be careful. The jump into this next maze may seem easy, but don't be fooled. 
you have to hover mid-air for quite a while and then pray you reach the platform instead of falling to your doom. T-Pose is pretty much required for this next section because it, using the jumping method doesn't work. Oh well, Jato's pay to win anyway. The final part of Floor 4 is another one of those stupid KB sections, but this one's really easy so it's fine. Floor 5 is a break floor, you're halfway there buddy. Floor 6 has another stupid KB net section, but again, pretty easy since it's above the KB floor and not on it. Floor 7 is a nightmare. First you have to adjust this loose platform so you could wrap around a kill break that you're normally supposed to jump on. Then you have to wall hop to this next platform and turn off shift lock when you're next to the platform. Oh, did I mention that you were doing this over in an outside section that sends you back to the really hard section at floor 3? Yeah, another really hard section at an outside. Do you see what I mean now? Then there's a dropper with damaging parts on the sides, and this time I'm going to recommend you to NOT use T-Pose. That's a first timer. The cylinder section should be self-explanatory. I would recommend going from the front for the next KP section. It's possible sideways, but just don't for your own sanity. Floors 8 and 9 are cakewalks compared to what we just did, but don't get your guard down, because there's still one more hard section awaiting you. Floor 10 has one last test at the start of the floor. You have to wall hop across this wall here and then turn around and land on the cylinder. This one's really RNG based and sometimes you can get da damage for literally no reason at all, so just hope JTOW RNG is on your side. And if you completed that and the rest of this tower, then all you have to do to win is, is to just get past some easy obstacles and finally complete the Tower of Slight Inconvenience. Now I discovered the possibility of this tower a bit too late, so I haven't completed this tower. This is probably even harder than TOSP, so this tower is going to be fun to complete in part 3. Our next tower is the Tower of Wallhogging. You can't get past floor 1, so thankfully I don't have to write a paragraph about how to beat this tower. God damn it, I spoke too soon. Tower of Lots of Damage is also possible. But how? Let me explain. Floor 1, you jump. Floor 2 has no KB. Floor 3 is a little interesting. You have to jump on different sides of the sphere for some of these jumps. I skipped the third spear to make my life easier. Floor 4 has no KB. Floor 5 has no KB. Floor 6 has no KB. Floor 7 has no KB. Floor 8 has KB. Wait, what? Well, it doesn't matter since you can just skip all the kill bricks on this floor. True. Floor 9 has a KB section, but it's pretty easy. Just stay closer to the edge and nowhere near the wall. Floor 10 has... KB walks. Don't worry though, we can just use the same strat we used on Tower of Stress. Wall hopping on the frame. This wall hop is a little more tricky though since you need to turn around. Now most people could just turn their mouse while wall hopping, but personally I mashed this key. After this wall hop section, there are no more kill bricks, just don't fall and victory will be yours. Well, that was a pretty easy tower. I've gotten better at wall hopping due to Thanos Tower and other stuff, so I didn't struggle here as much as TOS. Tower of Despair, everyone's favorite tower is the tower I will talk about now. At floor 5, there is a kill break platform we need to step on to progress. What a shame. Moving on to... Tower of Confusion is the last actual tower. You have to walk through a kill brick wall at floor 1, so thankfully I don't have to complete this trash. Also, renowned JTO YouTuber experts confirmed that this tower is not possible without taking damage. And I trust him. So yeah, this tower is impossible, sorry guys. Oh yeah, we also need to check the mini tower. Totally a tower only has a KP floor at the beginning of the tower, which you thankfully don't spawn on. This mini tower took me multiple attempts because I had never beaten tab before. And that concludes ring 3. 5 out of the 11, or 6 out of the 12 towers are possible without losing any health during the entire playthrough. Ring 3 gives us way more towers than ring 2 did. We are getting closer to ring 5, even without doing anything in ring 4. Hopefully we can keep this pace up with ring 4. Welcome to ring 4, my least favorite ring in Jato. Despite that, we still need to play through all the towers and see how many we can complete. So let's begin our journey in Ring 4! Tower of Spiraling Heights is the first tower on Ring 4. It's also the easiest, but you already know that. This tower is also made by Logan ISL. Yes, all the floors by one person. Who's a cloy? Well, let's go over the kill bricks in this tower. Floor 2 has these simple jumps on the slanted platform, but if you aren't a brave human, you can just skip these jumps. Floor 3 has the hardest section on this tower, but don't worry, we can just skip it with a simple wall hop skip. There's also this section, which I don't know what this is. 
Floor 4 has two keel brick floors over the two different sections, but other than that, no more granite textured bricks that make you lose 5 health points when touched. Floor 6 has a tight keel brick section, which would be harder if the speed boost was required, but you can just jump over it or wait for the timer to run out. Uh, sadly though, Floor 9 has a keel brick platform we have to jump on to progress, so this tower is impossible. Oh well, we were pretty close. Is what I would say if this tower was actually impossible. We have to use the good old sideways heli lag high jump thing. After a while, I managed to finally get past this part, and that's basically the tower. The final floor of this tower has some kill bricks, but they're easily avoidable, so we're all good. That was a pretty easy tower, and I mean, I can't complain. The second tower is Tower of Getting Gnomed. Man, the name of this tower really didn't age well. Anyways, the only kill brick in this tower is at floor 9, and it's decorative, meaning we can easily avoid it. The reason I have two attempts is because the first time I beat this tower, I forgot to record the footage. I am very smart, I know. Straight from BTS, the Tower of Linenophobia. Linenophobia? I don't know. At floor 5, there are force damage parts. There's also the dropper that has force damage, so that's pretty cringe if you ask Kaishimi. You can make it all the way to floor 9 of Tower of Elysium without taking damage. At floor 9, there are these kill brick jumps that are impossible to make without taking a little damage, so I will now go cry, cause TOE is not peak challenging, but too hard difficulty. Next, Tower of Terrible Mondays. This tower is impossible. I won't say anything else, colon D. I'm going to talk about the Tower of Leaning Ledges now. This tower surprisingly has no kill bricks. I genuinely expected this to be impossible, but hey, I'll take the free tower point. Moving on, Tower of Dust and Decay. There is a kill brick we have to jump on to progress at floor 2, so this tower is impossible. Now it's time to speedrun the psychologically unsafe towers. Tower of Holy Flip. This tower is fully possible until floor 7. There is a kill brick we MUST jump on. Citadel of Uneasiness is possible until floor 5. There are these weird kill brick spinners that are either nil difficulty or too hard difficulty. I was pretty confident the Citadel would be possible. Oh well. TOMP becomes impossible at floor 6 because KB walk. How unfortunate that I can't beat the worst tower in the game. Tower of Shattered Dream sequel is the next tower that I will talk about right now. Floor 1 is where we fail, and even if it's not, this tower is obviously impossible. Next, Tower of Thin Stud Spam is impossible because of the very first jump. You hit a kill brick ceiling when using this jump pad, so that's a base poggers kekarino red pilled moment. Wabat was a little trickier than the rest of the mini tower family. There were three sections where you could take damage in this tower. For the first section, you have to go to the side of the conveyor and just jump over this kill brick with T-pose. The second section requires you to go a little quicker than usual, but still pretty easy. And the last section requires you to jump over a really easy KB jump. Still a really easy tower though, but I'll take it. And finally, that's all of Ring 4 checked and investigated. 3 out of the 12, or 4 out of the 13 towers, are possible without taking damage. This puts us barely on the edge of being able to access Ring 5, but with this progression, we can already see the end up coming, because to progress to ring 6, we would need to complete 8 towers without taking damage, which I highly doubt is possible. But there will be a tower boost soon. If you've been keeping up with Jato news, you'd know that there's a new area coming to the Great Inferno that will boost our tower count by at least one. But we'll have to wait quite a while since submissions are closing only in January and we will still have to wait for the bugged testing and fixing, building, scripting, release, etc. So that means Jato No Damage is basically on hold for now, with the next episode probably not coming out until April or May of 2022. That's sad. But now that we've finished covering rings 2 through 4, I'm gonna have to say goodbye to all of you. So, remember everyone, stay in school, don't do drugs, and stop procrastinating on your projects. I'll see you in the next one!